Hello learners and uh, welcome back to Constant Learners. This is the third and final part of uh, Support Vector Machine. Here we are going to discuss nonlinear SVM and uh, the kernel trick or the kernel functions. Uh, in the previous two videos, that is part one and part two of Support Vector Machine, we discussed the basic of Support Vector Machine, that means uh, how Support Vector Machine can be used to solve classification problem. We discussed what is a hyperplane. Then uh, we also saw what is the most optimal hyperplane, right? We need to classify the data in the best possible way. So we need the most optimal hyperplane for that. Then we discussed linear classification. Of course, in the previous two videos, it was uh, almost everything about linear classification. In this video, we will be discussing nonlinear classification, correct? Then in the part two, we discussed what is a soft margin, hard margin, outliers. And finally, we did the math intuition behind support vector machine. If you haven't watched the part one and part two of SVM, uh, I suggest you please uh, go ahead and watch those videos first. I have li linked them above and also in the description box below. Uh, both the videos are going to give you a clear idea about how the data can be linearly separated using support vector machine. Uh, we also discussed the um, numerics behind that, the mathematical formula behind that. Okay, so we know that uh, support vector machine is uh, a supervised machine learning algorithm, right? And supervised algorithms require a labeled training data along with some algorithms and then uh, this training data along with algorithm generates some model so that whenever a new data is fed to the model, it can easily classify the data into its respective class. All right. Now here, this figure depicts the linear support vector machine. Why? As we can see, a straight line is separating the data into two different classes. This is class 1 and class 2. So this is linear SVM. Correct? This we have already discussed in the previous video. But what if the data is something like this or this? Can we easily classify this data using a straight line? Where are we going to draw a straight line? Here or here? No way we cannot classify this data using a straight line. So this is not a linear SVM. This is an example of non-linear SVM. All right? Here also, if suppose I draw a hyperplane somewhere here, is it the most optimal hyperplane? No. Our job is, or we can say the SVM's job is to find the most optimal hyperplane. But here we are not getting the most optimal hyperplane. We cannot consider all of these data points as outliers. So this is also not linearly classifiable. So how can we classify this kind of data? by using the kernel trick. Let's understand what exactly is the kernel trick. So here we have this data which cannot be linearly separated. So the kernel trick states that when the data cannot be separated into two classes using a straight line, we must add another dimension to the data, right? So here the data is inseparable. In this dimension, here the data is two-dimensional, x and y. So this two-dimensional data is not linearly separable. So what can we do? We can add another dimension to this data. This one-dimensional data is not linearly separable. So we can transform it into another dimension. Now which dimension are we going to transform it to? We are going to map the data into a new feature space for better classification. But what this feature space is going to be? It's going to be a higher dimension, right? So if the data is in one dimension, the data is one dimensional, we are going to transform it into two dimensions, correct? If the data is two dimensional, we are going to transform it into three dimensional data, okay? So what are we doing? We are transforming the data into higher dimension. Correct? And then the data is going to be linearly separable. 
all right so what exactly are we doing we are mapping the lower dimensional data into a higher dimensional space let's see how we can do this see here the data is in two dimensions so we can classify this data somewhat like this right suppose this is the three dimensions so we are going to classify the data in a way that let me take another color so that all the blue data points stay here okay and all the red data points move to a higher level or we can say a higher uh, floor now this data is linearly classifiable right so in th three dimensions when we uh, move one dimension up the data can be easily separated linearly okay the data can be linearly separated let's see how see now let's say suppose this is in three dimension okay so now we can say that in three see i cannot draw three dimensions here it's going to be something like this i'm just trying to show you the uh, the front view of this all right so here we can see that some data points have moved one level up right so now this data can be easily separated right but here in this case since this is in three dimension the hyperplane is going to be a two dimensional hyperplane all right this we have already discussed in the first part of support vector machine if the data is in three dimension the hyperplane is going to be a two dimensional hyperplane if the data is in two dimension data then the hyperplane is a one dimensional line correct the hyperplane is one dimensional line so here our uh, our hyperplane is going to be something like this right so it can easily separate the data into two classes correct now let's understand this one now the equation for this z we are adding the z dimension here the data is already in x y dimension we are adding the z dimension the equation is going to be x square plus y square all right and then this data can be said to be moved to a higher dimension correct now here suppose let's say we have x we have to add two dimensions here we are going to make this data transform it into two dimensional data let's say y is equal to x square so in this case suppose this is at x equal to 0 x equal to 1 2 3 4 5 and this is minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and so on all right so when the data point is going to be 0 y will stay 0 correct for x equal to 0 for x equals to 1 or minus 1 okay y is going to stay 1 for x is equals to plus or minus 2 y is going to be 4 2 square is 4 for x equals to plus minus 3 y is going to be equals to 9 correct so let's see how we can plot this here this is 0 on x as well as on y when x is 0 y is also 0 now when x is 1 y is also 1 let's say this is 1 and 1 when x is 2 y is 4 so for x equals to 2 and x equals to minus 2 for both of these points y is going to be equal to 4 correct for x is equals to 3 and minus 3 y is going to be equal to 9 correct so now we can say this data is easily linearly separable correct so since this is a two-dimensional data our hyperplane is going to be a line correct this we have already discussed in part one of support vector machine so see this is our hyperplane that can easily classify the data into two different classes all right so this is nothing but the kernel trick wherein when the data is not linearly separable we can transform it into a higher dimension and then this data can be easily separated using a straight line or not a straight line we can say the data can be easily linearly separable okay like 
here also the data is linearly separable here also now when the data will be in three dimensions we're going to transform it into four dimensional space if the data is in four dimension we're going to transform it into five dimensional space all right so this is possible but then svm also has its own limitations all right it is robust to outliers but it cannot accept a lot of outliers if the data is too large then transforming it into uh, excessively higher dimensions are going to be very very complicated right so there are some limitations to svm as well all right now there are multiple different types of kernel tricks or kernel functions there's a polynomial kernel then gaussian kernel rbf kernel but we are not going to discuss those here uh, this was the third and final video of uh, support vector machine. Um, previously, we've discussed logistic regression, the math intuition behind logistic regression. I will link it in the description box below. And if you have any doubts, any queries, you can always mention them down in the comment section. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. And uh, thank you so much for watching.